But as we look into this uh, player of the week, it was one Josh Hart who edged out RJ on Twitter and YouTube by just a couple of percentage points. The fans have voted, and Josh Hart gets this week's Knicks Fan TV Player of the Week. Uh, in this week's two games, Josh Hart averaging 14 points per game, 8 rebounds, 6.5 assists, shooting 55% from the field, 42% from three, and 100%. From the free throw line, which, you know, given the Knicks, that is that is a miracle. Three steals. Josh Hart, Al, able to get it done in a multitude of ways, man. He, he's been a, a complete Swiss Swiss Army knife for this team. And um, a, a guy who, as we said, is going to be logging major, major minutes, man. What was your impression of Josh Hart this week, bro? Whatever you needed. It felt like whenever you needed a big moment, Josh Hart was there. Like, absolutely. Like, you needed a steal. He was right there. You needed a critical rebound. He was right there. You needed a clutch three. He was right there. That is, to me, that's just the definition of a gamer. Like, he rises up to the occasion when you need it. And you need guys like that on your team. And the other thing, and, and Jeff and I were talking about it uh, on post game. He's an enforcer, man. He does the things that trying to get into like Jokic's head, right? Yeah. And that's the type of stuff that. It adds another dimension to this team. So for Josh Hart this week, fantastic. But once again, going back to the 15 games, guys, like it has been impressive. He's averaging 11 points. He's averaging 60% from the field. He's shooting 55% from three. He's averaging 78% from the free, free throw line. He's getting you seven rebounds still. He's getting you four assists. He's getting all over three, uh, one steal per game. That's just who Josh Hart is, man. And the fact that the Knicks won another trade. You could talk about Derrick Rose being the first trade that they won. Now, this being the second trade, and we're, we're not going to talk about JD's boy Cam Reddish. We'll, we'll leave that to the wayside. But you know, we'll, we'll, the fact that the Knicks won, <laughs> the fact that the Knicks won this Josh Hart trade, it's it's good, man, because he's going to be needed. He's he's just a vital instrument to what they're going to be doing in the playoffs, man. Defensively, like yeah. when I'm watching him play against the Celtics, I can't tell you how Tatum did not want to drive against him because of how physical Josh Hart is having somebody who's that grueling of a defender that you have to play against. You have to think twice on when do you want to utilize your energy? Do you want to go fight? And even for Josh Hart, even though he's not the same height as Tatum, right? He's still, he's still making the shots difficult when he attacks the rim. And if you got to face a guy like that throughout a series, you're going to be thinking twice. So everything he's done this week, what he's done since he's been here, what he's going to do for the future. It's just that gritty mentality that adds to this Tom Thibodeau team. Yeah, no no question, man. And and uh, here was Josh Hart after the Nuggets game on how the Knicks should be, uh, how they should be approaching things, as courtesy of uh, SNY videos. Obviously, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good feel, good win for us. Obviously, playing a tough team like that, who's had the success that they've had, you know, this whole season. Um but we just know we got to just keep it moving because at the end of the day, um, we can't get complacent. And I think if we beat a team like that and we get complacent, it doesn't really mean anything. So we got to continue to um, work hard, continue to get better, continue to learn. But rather learn with the wins than losses um, and keep it moving. You know, we got Minnesota on Monday, you know, a tough Minnesota team, and we got to come in here um, ready to go. And here was Hart on uh, the physicality that he plays with, man. Thinks he's playing the wrong sport. Um, I probably am playing different, uh, the wrong sport, honestly. I'm just, how I play um, is physical. Um, it's like a bull in the china shop kind of thing. So um, I feel like I probably would have been like a good, like, put on some weight, like a good DN or something, a linebacker, you know, kind of like physicality, but... Um, you know, guess, guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, look, that was, that was one of the things, man, when, when I watched this guy play, especially when he first got there, I was like, yo, it looks like he's playing football out there. It's how physical he is, but it, it's just fit, fit, and fit. And, and Al, you talked about the cam situation. You look at a Josh Hart, it's fit in, across so many categories. One, this team plays physical. He fits right in, plays physical brand of basketball. This team rebounds well. He adds to the rebounding, especially on the offensive side of things. Then he can put get them out in transition. 
uh, an area where they've been okay. They've been okay this year uh, with with IQ being able to push it and RJ and, and Brunson and sometimes Randall, you know, kind of pushes that pace, but he fits right in and he's the best at it. So there's so many facets of his game that he comes in here, he fits right in, but gives him an extra element. But I think one of the more underrated a- a- elements of his game is his passing ability. You know, he talks about, yeah, I'm like a bull in the china shop, but he's way more controlled. He plays physical, he plays aggressive, but he plays smart. He plays smart, and, and I go back to that Portland game, man. Without Brunson, the team not being able to facilitate well for each other, not RJ, not Julius, not not IQ could get it done, and this guy's out there getting it done and making his team better, man. Like, he just makes the team better in so many ways, J.D. It's... um. He's going to be an X factor in this playoffs, no, no question about it. He, he's going to be playing all of his minutes when once he gets into the game. There's no question about it. Yeah, and I think even you know you saw it in the last game. Uh, you know, Tom Thibodeau had a decision to make there between quickly and and, and Barrett, and I, and I was saying the decision is going to be quickly and Barrett because IQ wasn't really you know IQ wasn't making shots. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, is he going to stick with IQ? Or is he going to pivot to to RJ because Josh Hart is going to stay? Like Josh Hart might be the only Nick, and you saw it with IQ. IQ wasn't hitting shots. Came out the game. Here comes Barrett. Josh Hart might be the only player, um, yeah. you know, outside of Brunson and and Randall that could struggle offensively on a night and still get the closing minutes right. because of everything else that he gives you and the confidence that the coach has that he makes smart plays. You talk about. You know, for a guy that drives to the basket, pushes the ball so many times when he gets the rebound, he's right. He goes, you know, he pushes the ball, goes right to the basket. He looks so controlled, as you're saying, in doing it. You know, you see a lot of guys, especially off the bench guys, be that aggressive. Sometimes they don't look as controlled. Wild. They'll turn the ball over. They get a little wild. Um, they don't make the high basketball IQ play. And, and Josh Hart seems to always know uh, what to do with the basketball. Oh. 